All right, well, another day uh, for me, anyway. And we're gonna get back to work here. You know, um, while uh, you were away, uh, and we were cleaning up, getting ready to show you how to do this uh, next step here, um, we slipped some more forms into here. And there was a cruel joke running around the shop. We were thinking we weren't gonna tell you just to think if you, to see if you noticed, but I would have gotten too many emails over it. So yeah, we did put more forms in here. The reason we had less in there before is so it would be easier for you to watch us line them up and it wouldn't be too cluttered. Uh, here's the boat with all the forms now. Everything's lined up, everything's taped and ready to go. Um, so we're ready to put our first strip on now. This is what we've been leading up to. Time to get going here, time to build a boat. Um, uh, this particular boat, this is an 18 footer. Um, so I'm gonna be using 20, stri 20 foot strips uh, to get started here. And uh, normally, you know, with a couple of people doing this, it's no big deal. One person holds, another person attaches. So while we're doing this process here, I'm gonna show you different techniques throughout. I'm gonna start out using the technique that most people will use, just using staples uh, going up. Um, and then from there, I'll show you how to do it stapleless. I'll show you a couple of ways to do it stapleless. Um, and, um, and we'll just take it as it goes. And I'll stop intermittently and show you different techniques. So uh, because I don't have a lot of people in front of the camera here, I've got little glue bo blocks on some of the forms and you can see I've got little spring clamps there holding them on. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a staple gun. And truly, you know, for the first strip, whether, no matter what technique you're using, for the first uh, two or three strips, it really doesn't matter because they're gonna be covered up by gunnels anyway. All right, so make life easy on yourself. I'm just gonna use a stapler. Now, you're gonna feel underneath and you're gonna feel the edge of the strip. Now, I put my strips on with the cove down. I got real specific reasons for doing that um, and I'll go over that in a second when I show you the second strip. So, I'm gonna feel underneath, I'm gonna feel right around an eighth of an inch that the strip is hanging down below the uh, end of the form and I'm gonna throw a staple in. Okay, so as not to get any puckers in the strip as I'm going down, I'm gonna take the clamp off now that I got at least one hold in it, and I'm gonna move my way down. And the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And the next one. Okay, until I get down to transom. Okay, now if you did everything right and you lined all your forms up right, you're gonna know that this strip is gonna wanna go right to where the line is on the patterns. That's a beautiful thing because that's when, when I designed the boat, that's where I wanted you to land. So if everything's all lined up right and you cut your forms right, this strip is gonna wanna go right there where that line is. So I'm gonna take a little bit of glue. Uh, this, is, uh, this is just uh, waterproof wood glue uh, that I get from Home Depot. Buy it by the gallon. I actually buy it five gallons at a time. Uh, it's called Type Bond, Type Bond 3. You can also use Type Bond 2, I just prefer the three. Uh, put a little bit of glue right here on the transom where it's gonna land. And then line it up as best you can. And put in a staple. Good. That takes care of the center of the boat this way. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. Just gonna head off in the other direction. Careful not to get your finger in there. I've done it more than once and I can tell you it hurts. Now, as you're doing this, if everything's going right to this point, you should be noticing that that's a nice, smooth curve from front to back. Get that out of the way. And I'll throw in the last couple here. And now, now, do yourself a big favor. I have two blue bottles, one on each end of the boat. It'll keep you from hiking back and forth. 
all right? Now, on this one here, you're gonna notice that the uh, pattern for this particular boat also has a recommended water line, uh, excuse me, not a rec recommended shear line where the shear strip should hit. Now, you know, don't get too anxious about it, but you know, it's right in that area. And again, the strip's gonna wanna go where the strip's gonna wanna go. So I'm gonna check on both sides here and see that it does in fact pretty much land exactly where I want it to land. Well, I'm gonna put a dab of glue there. I'm gonna put the strip there, making sure that it's nice and tight. No, don't let it pucker or anything. And put in a staple. And there it is. That's the first strip. I'm gonna back out and I'm gonna see if our camera person can take a shot all along that strip so that you can see that it's a nice even curve. Uh, no bumps, no bulges. Everything's doing exactly what it wants to do. Really important that you do this first strip right because every strip after that is basically following this line. All right, so get down on your knees, take a look down at it, kind of shift one way or the other, and the curve should go up and down real smooth and in and out real smooth. If it does all that, everything's going in the right direction. All right, now I'm going to bring you over to my glue jig, and you're going to find out why it is I put my strips with the uh, cove side down. All right, so let's go over there and take a look. The internet is a wonderful thing and a horrible thing. Uh, I get a lot of emails about from people saying, geez, you know, why do you do with your bead, with your cove down? Because I've been told, you know, I read this internet site, said cove up, blah, blah, blah. We've done dozens and dozens and dozens of these boats. So the problem is, is when you do it that way and you try to put the glue on the boat, it works really well when the strips are down here, right? And the strips are aimed up and you can run along it with a bottle and put glue and then put the next strip on. Problem is, as you get up here towards the middle of the boat, now you're holding your bottle sideways trying to squeeze glue in there and it makes a heck of a mess. There's really no reason for it. We started doing it this way years ago, probably 15, 20 years ago. And it's a real simple process. I take two by four blocks here. Um, they're about maybe three inches deep. I cut a groove in it and I put them along my bench. And that way there, I can drop my strip right in it. Now, I can simply take my glue bottle and I can run right up it. You can cover a lot of ground real quick this way and get yourself a nice clean bead all right and every single strip is going to be just that simple it's a 20 foot strip and i just ran down it in a few seconds now i'm just going to take this strip go over there flip it upside down push it down and staple it's that simple all right now i'm not going to lie to you this is definitely a simpler process when you got two people doing it. Uh, but it's certainly possible with one. Start at the middle. Now when you push down, when you push them together, don't, you only got a staple holding it on there, so don't push down. Squeeze them. Squeeze them together. All right? Got the first one. Throw a staple. And then just start working your way down. It's a real simple process. You may have to rock it a little bit to get the bead inside the cove. If you did it right and you're using the right amount of glue and all that, you should get a little bit of a squeeze out. Not a huge amount, just a little bit. Try to keep it nice and clean. If you are going to use the staple method of doing this, and again, most people will, there's nothing wrong with that, um, line your staples up nice and even going up. In other words, don't jump back and forth. Try to get a nice straight line going up. A little dab of glue on the end. Give it a squeeze and pop it on. Now, as you're going back up, you're going to want to check because here's one of the worst things that can happen to you is, you know, you slipped or you weren't paying attention and the strips in between the forms are off of each other. And if you don't find that until after it dries, it's really kind of a pain in the neck. You got to slice it with a, an X-Acto knife or a razor knife and then you have to kind of 
figure out how to get the two of them back together again. Uh, not impossible, but just a, you know, if you just take a few seconds and make sure everything's where it's supposed to be as you're walking down, you won't have that problem. All right. I gotta put two here because apparently the first time around I missed this one. There we go. And you can probably see a little bit of squeeze out that I got going. Now you also want to make sure, you know, before you put your strip on, before you put glue in the strip actually, check the strip. Uh, you know, even if you get a kit from us, you know, we're not perfect and you're probably not perfect and there might be a strip that's going to chip in it that you didn't see. Um, or you may have grabbed a 16 footer when you thought it was 20. So the last thing you want to do is uh, find out your strip was about six inches short when you get to this point of putting it on. Oops. A little bit tender before you get the first few on. Get my glue on the edge there. Make sure you got this taped up really well here or else getting your stem formed on off is gonna be a little bit tough when time comes. Okay, so we got a little bit of ooze out between the strips. It's a beautiful thing. Everything seems to be lined up the way it is supposed to be, and uh, that about does it. So from here, uh, it gets pretty uneventful. So what I'm going to do is probably put two or three more strips on this side. I'm going to trim the ends. I'm going to go to the other side, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm not going to bore you with putting 180 of these on. Yeah, I'm just going to stop every now and again, and we'll go through some of it, okay? Okay, so the last thing you just saw was I cut the strips flush to the stem and I cut the strips flush to the transom. Uh, two different reasons for doing that. First, you cut the fl uh, flush to the stem because I'm about to match what I just did on that side on this side and those will be in the way if I don't, right? Uh, I cut flush to the transom because as you're walking around your boat, you need to avert disaster. And the biggest disaster that could happen down there is you're you know, not paying attention to your hips as you walk by, you snag the strips and you start ripping them away. So just take a second, cut them flush. What I use is uh, very inexpensive, about uh, $30 Japanese back saw or a pull saw that I get from big box stores, Home Depot or, um, or Lowe's or something to that effect. Now, yeah, I originally started getting these because they had replaceable blades. If you're out there watching this and you can find a place where I can buy these blades, let me know because apparently they don't sell them. But it's still a good saw, it's a good value for the money, uh, and it'll certainly last you. One saw will last you through an entire boat. Okay, so I got six, six strips done on that side. It took me all of about a half hour to do it. 
There is no quicker way to strip a boat than using staples. All right, you gotta go back and you gotta pull them out later, but you know, you do that in your downtime or you grab a cup of coffee, it's really not that big a deal. So, um, you know, it, we're gonna go through a few steps. As a matter of fact, I'm about to show you a step here if you wanna try to do something without staples. Uh, but again, you know, uh, if you wanna put 150, 200 hours into your boat, then stripping with staples is probably going to be the way you want to go, particularly if you're going to paint your boat. Now, this is a white hall. Around here, we typically do the traditional thing. We paint our white halls white, and we put the color stripe up there to represent Sandy Point Boat Works. Uh, if you're going to leave it uh, bright work, wood, um, then it's up to you whether or not you want to go without staples. I'll show you a few things uh, during this, but just be aware that it will significantly lengthen the time that it takes to build a boat. And for a lot of it, you're going to need at least another set of hands holding the strips and helping you out with the glue blocks and all that. So uh, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to go down there. I got a hot glue gun. I got fired up and I'm going to show you one of the techniques we use to go without staples. All right. So um, this is a simple way to go without staples. Uh, again, especially for a boat this long, you're gonna need another set of hands more than likely, all right? This is a little glue block. Uh, this is a piece of strip. You know, we cut them by the thousands. I got boxes of these around here. Typically, I'm gonna be honest with you, if we're doing a boat and it's bright work, we're not using staples here. We're, we're, going, we're going without them, but you know, we got three people or four people or whatever, it might be around attacking a boat and it goes really quick. Um, this is a hot glue gun, uh, really inexpensive. You can find them in a craft store, you can find them at Home Depot, you can find them at Lowe's. Now, listen to me very, very carefully here. If you're dozing off, wake up. The glue that you're gonna put in your hot glue gun is not woodworker's glue. You will be greatly disappointed when it comes time to take these blocks off if you're using woodworker's glue. You wanna use the regular craft glue, which is more than enough to hold these strips together yet it will come apart when you need it to come apart, all right? Really important, I hope you're all taking notes, crafts glue, not woodworker's glue, all right? So all you're gonna do, put a little dab there, a little dab there, you're going to pull the strips together, and you're gonna span the two strips just like that. Hold it, oh, for about 25 seconds or so. Uh, and it'll be nice and tight and nice and snug. Now, I was kind of hoping that I would have an area where the strips weren't coming together very well that I could show you how this pulls it together. You know, as it happens, all of these strips came together perfectly. So, um, but had they not, uh, you just pull them together, glue it together, it's on there nice and strong, not gonna come off. You gotta make sure you hold it for about 25 seconds or else it's gonna get spongy on you and it won't hold the strips together. Again, really, really helpful if you have another set of hands while you're doing this. What I just did there can completely replace these staples, all right? So you do the first two or three strips using staples to get a good anchor, and then after that, instead of the staples, you pull it together, you put the glue block up there, and you keep going. Now, that at some point is gonna require you to stop and pull everything together and let it dry, all right? And you do that with bungee cords. And again, as we move forward here, I'll show you how to attach bungee cords to make that happen and little jigs and such. Uh, but in the interest of getting this boat done for the video, we're gonna continue to use staples as we go along. I'll just show you different techniques throughout. Okay? All right, time to go to the other side. All right, we have uh, oh, just about 30 strips on the boat now. And don't want you to think I'm cheating you. If there was anything between strip three and now that I needed to stop and tell you, I would have. Uh, pretty uneventful up to this point. I normally don't like to tell people how long it takes because, you know, building a boat is a journey. It's not just the destination. And you should enjoy that journey, which we've been telling people for a very long time now. So uh, I'm going to tell you because we keep getting asked anyway. So getting to this point, 30 strips in, it's probably about three, three and a half hours worth of work. Now I've gotten to the point where I had to shape my stem a little bit more because I ran out of stem to work with. And I'm putting the tape on just like we did before. Yeah, we'll do that to the other side in a second. I want you to notice a couple things. Uh, as I was uh, laying the wood out on the bench, I noticed that I had some, you know, dock strips. I had about 10 of them or so. 
So I grab two of the strips, put them here, and then I put a nice bright white one, and then I put two more strips here. So let's talk a little bit about the strips. I know we haven't really talked about that much yet. You know, again, it's, it's the, uh, the age of the internet, and people can write anything they want. And, I, and I've actually seen this stuff in books, too. Um, uh, one book, customer wrote in and said, Jack, I read this book. It said you should never use vertical grain strips. But they didn't say why. Well, you know, after 30 years, we've been building boats using vertical, horizontal, flat, all kinds of grains. Uh, and you can see it's beautiful. I mean, this is a vertical grain strip that we purposely put in here between the dock strips because the grain pops out and, and it just looks lovely. So not quite sure why, you know, some people are saying that. We've never had a problem with it. They mill up just fine. Um, so, you know, I would encourage you to build a wooden boat. If you're building a wooden boat, especially if, you know, you know we, we pretty much never paint the inside of boats, but sometimes we do paint the outsides. Um, mostly because if you've built as many strippers as we have, you know, you learn that paint can be pretty too. So this boat will probably end up white or maybe a deep blue um, on the outside, but the inside uh, is definitely going to stay natural. And I would encourage you, I mean, if you look at this, this is a rainbow of western red cedar here. I've got dark, I've got light, I've got tan, I've got brown, everything in between. I've got some horizontal, I've got some vertical. Uh, and, you know, it all makes for a beautiful wooden boat, and I would encourage you to, you know, go ahead and let the wood be the wood. And I think when you're done, you're going to be pretty happy with that. Uh, now, that being said, you know, as, as I strip through this and you watch and you see pictures and you see video, um, you may notice a strip here and there that may have some small defect and a little tight knot or something like that. Uh, I, and I wanted to tell you, the reason that we do that, you should, uh, if you're getting a kit from us, it'll definitely be clear strips. Um, if you're um, in likely mostly horizontal grain or flat grain. Um, but if you're doing your own, um, don't worry so much about the grain as you do worry about knots and defects in the wood, right? Because that's going to make a difference as you're going along. The reason we're using them here, quite honestly, is because, you know, we, when we rip strips here, we've got a rack over there that's got a few thousand of them right now. Um, you know, there are some strips that don't make the grade that we wouldn't send out to a customer, but geez, you know, it's 20 foot long, it's beautiful, it's got one little tiny defect in it. We're not gonna throw it out, so, so we use it. But, but if you're going to try to make your own kit, you should, by all means, you know, look at the boards, check for any defects, and be aware that you are gonna have some waste, all right? Okay, uh, well, as promised, I'm gonna show you how to do it uh, without staples. I'm going to show you how to put one, put one up here using hot glue and the glue gun. Uh, so let me finish putting tape on the other side of this. I'll get a strip ready and then we'll run down and I'll show you how to use those little glue blocks on an entire strip. It's easier than you think. Okay, well, again, this is certainly not impossible if you're by yourself, but a lot easier with another set of hands. Well, the first thing you need to do is get the strip so that it's up there and doesn't fall down on you. Once you've managed to accomplish that, then it's just a matter of putting a little dab of glue here, a little dab of glue here, and putting the block over the top of it and holding it. Now clearly, this is going to be a longer process than using the staples, but if you're one of those persons who plans on putting maybe three or four strips on a day, um, then you can certainly do this and it won't get in your way. If, but, you know, y if you do that, then it's going to be a while before your boat's done, right? You know, talking about this boat here, close to 150 strips, so, you know, do the math. It's going to take you a while to get there. What you do have to know while you're doing this is, uh, again, I told you, use the crafter's glue, glue not the woodworking glue, and make sure that wherever you're putting that little block that you wipe off any ooze there from the wood glue or else when you go to take that block off it's going to be a lot tougher than you want it to be. So again, a little dab of glue, not too much. Put the block on, hold it for about 20 to 30 seconds. Then just work your way down the boat. So while I'm doing this, this is a good opportunity to talk a little bit more about the strips. Okay, the best thing you can do for yourself before you ever start laying strips to the boat is making sure that you're working with quality. 
And when I say quality, I mean every strip should be the same. When they should be a quarter inch thick and anywhere from five eighths to three quarter inches wide. And then when you bead and cove them, the bead and cove should write dead smack down the middle. That'll make the stripping process infinitely easier for you. And it'll make the sanding process a whole lot better. Uh, because then you don't have to sand out puckers and bulges and you know all that kinds of stuff. So the way we do it, this is uh, probably one of the more popular questions that we answer. Uh, when we rip our wood down here, you know, again, you know, we're usually doing a thousand or two at a time, but um, it's all the same process whether you're doing a hundred or a thousand. Uh, we rip them just a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. The reason for that is it's really difficult to rip to exactly one quarter of an inch and not get saw blades or, you know, places where you go in a little bit or places where you go out a little bit. So we rip them about a sixteenth of an inch larger. And then we plane both sides, we surface plane. We send them through on one side, flip them over and send them through on another. So that when we're done, we end up with exactly quarter inch strips. Now once you got exactly quarter inch strips, you're going to use canoe bits. Now you will find again, the internet is a wonderful place. You will find people on the internet saying, ah, you don't need to bead and cove them, you can just hand bevel them. It's true, you can. Although I wouldn't recommend it. Chances of you getting a uh, fit like we're getting here by hand beveling every one of them so that all the angles match, pretty slim. Um, you know, maybe if you've done 15 or 20 boats, you can do that. It's gonna take you a whole lot longer and the only reason that I don't recommend it, really, is because you don't gain anything. Boat doesn't come out any better. The joints certainly don't come out any better. If anything, they're gonna come out um, less tight than what you have here. Gluing it's gonna be much more difficult. So, you know, I'm having a hard time seeing the gain. Okay. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, here in the ends, because we're filming, I'm going to continue to glue these. Now what you would normally do if you wanted to do it completely without staples, is you would put a block using hot glue on the inside of that transom. Hold on. And then you would clamp it with a finger clamp, right? You would do a little spring clamp, put a little block inside there, clamp it right down like that. The problem I have with this, and again, as I tell you these things, it's not because I, you know, lean one way or the other, although on some things I do, but, you know, there are uh, companies out there who have what they call systems. And those systems have forms with grooves in it. And as you put your strips on, you take these clamps and you put them all the way up. And you can, without a doubt, make a beautiful boat that way. The problem I have with it is you can only do one strip at a time. Because once I put that strip on there and I put a clamp on there, I gotta wait for that glue to dry before I can take the clamps off and put another strip on. And, you know, like I said, we've got, uh, well, a lot of strips on this boat now. Uh, and we're about three and a half hours into it. Doing it one at a time, we'd be a couple of weeks into this process already. And uh, as a general rule, I want to get into the water as fast as possible. Uh, and a lot of that is because we prototype boats here, and I'm always interested in finding out actually how they do. So I want to get them in the water. Uh, the method that I'm showing you right now uh, pretty much does everything that the clamping method does with one exception. You have to take these little glue blocks off when you're done. And it's simple enough to do. I'm going to show you that in a minute from the block we put on earlier. I'm going to pop that off. One of the benefits of doing this though, and I do it even if I'm stapling, once you get between forms, if you've got a place that's a little bit squishy, a little bit loose, go ahead and throw a glue block on there and pull them together. Uh, that takes care of this end of the boat, so we'll move up here. Alright, so again, all these methods are just uh, a means to an end. And you have to decide 
you know, what it is that you're willing to tolerate. During the video shoots, you're going to see that between strips, we take uh, paper towels and we wipe the glue from the squeeze before we move on to the next strip. Uh, the reason for that is because it's a lot easier to clean it up now than it is to sand it off later. As a general rule, that's true with not just the glue, but the epoxy, but we'll get to the epoxy in a little while. But if you just take a little extra time, be a little bit meticulous, it actually saves you a lot of work. Okay, now you may find that uh, as you're going along here, particularly if the strips that you're applying to have already dried in place, that you have to roll them out a little bit so that you can roll this one in. You want to make sure that you get that little bit of ooze there, or depending on how much glue you put on there, a lot of ooze. A little dab, put on the block. A little word about shaping forms. Again, in books and on the internet, you'll hear some people say that you need to shape forms. Because as you're coming in, you can't get a good contact here. Well, the fact is, there's really no reason to have flat contact with this particular form or this particular form. All you have to do is make sure if you're using staples, that you have the staple on the side where it does make contact and you're aiming directly into the form. It's really that simple. Okay, and same story here. There are clamping schemes that you can use. That you can uh, clamp this form down. Uh, but I'm just going to put a staple right there. And I would recommend that you do the same. That's one complete strip. All the way up and down with uh, glue blocks. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to wipe off the excess glue. When using this method you want to make sure that you come back and you squeeze between to make sure you're making good contact. Alright, so if you can squeeze it and it feels spongy at all or it doesn't feel like it's good and tight, um, then you're going to want to throw a glue block in between as well. This boat is stripping really well. I'm not having too many issues with it. Um, so I'm just going to continue on. So I'm going to continue to move on with staples. Uh, and I'm going to do that because we got a DVD to finish here. Um, but this works just fine. Uh, I've done a, it, it, in full disclosure, if we're building boats around here, whether it's for one of us or for a customer or a prototype even, we'll typically do it using the glue blocks. But again, that's because we'll have two or three sets of hands on it and uh, we'll have glue blocks flying all over the place and we can do it almost, almost as quickly as we do it with staples. If it's your first boat, my recommendation is use the staples. Uh, and I think you're going to be thrilled with it, but we'll know sooner or later when this boat is done. All right, well, before I continue on with the stripping, I just promised you that I was going to show you how to take these off. And there is a method to the madness here, okay? It's simple enough to do. Um, get yourself a chisel, nice sharp one. And the name of the game here is to make sure the block you're taking off is weaker than the wood you're taking it off of, right? So, you know, the, the inclination here is just rock it, pop it. Nine times out of ten, that'll work. It'll pop right off. But it's that one time out of ten will take a little nick out of your wood and then you have to go back and sand it and finish it. So what I found is, if I take a chisel, nice sharp chisel, and I just chip away at this, so that it's a nice thin piece left, now I've basically weakened that piece so I can go ahead and, and rock that off, alright? And I'll just take my chisel and knock off that wood though. All right, and the rest of that's gonna come off later. I'm gonna take a sure form and I'll give that a little scrape uh, and it'll come right off. As a matter of fact, let me just go grab that sure form now and I'll show you that. All right, so a sure form uh, is one of these little guys. It's a rasp. Uh, it's made by Stanley. You can find them at all the big box stores. And you're just gonna take 
and scrape that glue right down. And the reason you want to put this little bit of extra effort into it is because when you go back and throw sandpaper on this, your sandpaper is going to gum up really, really quick if you don't go ahead and take that off. So it just takes a few seconds. It comes right off. All right. So yeah, these two are joined together using the glue block. Glue block's off and everything's good to go. You know, again, most definitely takes more time than staples. Um, and, but the only other option really is to use clamps. And if you start using clamps, then you really slow down the whole stripping process. It's all really a choice that you're going to have to make. Uh, but for most people, I think they're going to go with the staples. All right, well, I'm going to uh, strip up and uh, get these going. Usually, if you're going to have some kind of a problem with the strips pulling away from the boat a little bit, it'll be in the front third or the back third of the boat or wherever there's a real curve where you start to roll over the bottom of the hull. Uh, you'll know because as you're putting the strips on, either using you know, a stripless me uh, stapleless method or staples, uh, you're going to start to get to the point where as you're putting them on, they're hanging away and you just, you know, they, they're fine every time you put them together, but then you let go and they come away. So what you need to do is stop and you need to uh, put them down against the forms and you need to let them dry. If you don't, you're going to end up with a heck of a problem. So, uh, you know, whether that's three or four strips or, or ten strips, it doesn't really matter. So what you're going to do is uh, bungee them down and give it an hour and a half, two hours at least for that yellow glue to set. All right, so it's a real easy process. I have a bungee cord here. Get them any, again, any big box store. Don't worry too much about the size. Get a bunch of different sizes, all right? And I got some deck screws, and you just put the deck screws through the form, uh, and you wrap the bungee around. So you start by putting, I got one down here already that I can hook up to. And now I'm gonna bring this around so that it holds the, holds the strips of the form. And I'm gonna mark right about there is where I want the screw. So I'm going to go ahead and put that screw in right now. All right, so I'm around the other side because the screw gun barely fits between there. I got a little X there. What I did is I pulled the bungee around. I put an X where the screw needs to go. And I'm just going to put it in. Both screws are in. All we do is hook here on the bottom, pull it tight, wrap around the shear, come on up and over, snap it onto that screw. All right, so you don't want to overdo it with the pressure, you know. Um, you're not looking to crush the strips, particularly along the shear line here. And up here, you know, if you've got something that's really cantankerous and you can't get it down, snap this around and take a little block of wood and stick it up underneath here. And that'll put even more pressure right here without trying to crush anything else, all right. Uh, but that's the general way it works. Um, and if I were doing this without staples, I'd have a bungee cord at every single station on both sides right now. Um, I'm going to let this go ahead and dry. Uh, that's it for the day. Next time we get together, we're going to be putting that transom knee on um, so that we can finish stripping up.